Hi, my name is Fanny Gerson. I am from Mexico City and I'm really excited to be here to share a bit about Pan Dulce with you. And this is my personal favorite and one of the most iconic Pan Dulces in Mexico called Concha. Concha translates into seashell and um, the name, you know, comes from the fact that it looks like a seashell. So the first step is we're going to make a starter. You can either measure or weigh. I always prefer the scale, it's just much more exact. So here we only have, it's three simple ingredients. It's uh, bread flour, yeast, and water. Mix this together so it doesn't have any lumps. And then we're going to cover it and we're going to set it aside and this is going to start, you know, bubbling and doing its magic. And then you're going to cover it. You can put a cloth. You can put a um, like plastic wrap or one of these things, kind of like a shower cap. I love these. <laughs> Set it aside in a warm place for about an hour or so. OK, so it's been about an hour. Look at our beautiful starter. It's nice and bubbly. So we're going to put this in our mixing bowl. And you're going to see it's kind of like stretchy and sticky, bubbly. That's what you want. That means the yeast is working. And then we're going to weigh the flour directly on top of this. So there's many different um, recipes for conchas out there. This is a great one. I'm always looking for different concha recipes. All right, so we're going to move over to our mixer. And then we're just going to add all the ingredients. So added the vanilla, the eggs, and the egg yolk, and then the butter, your room temperature butter. Now, this dough is going to mix until it's all together and it's nice and elastic, but it's not going to be one of those doughs that is necessarily going to be leave the sides of your bowl completely clean. So what you're looking for is a little bit sticky, and once it starts to come together, you can turn it up a little bit. So let's check it out. It's, I still don't feel like everything is well combined, so I'm gonna, and it's not quite elastic yet, like it still breaks apart. So I'm gonna keep on mixing for a little while, and that's going to help create the elasticity that we're looking for. So this has been beating for about, um, like about eight minutes or so, and it feels very elastic. And if you pull it, it you can literally, like, bounces. And you can see a little bit of a window, you know, but it's still a little bit sticky on the sides. That's okay. Resist the urge to add more flour. This is how you want it to be. It feels kind of thick, sticky, silky. Then you want to scrape the sides just so that it all comes together. And it's, it's a really nice dough. And you're going to cover it. You can leave as is or you can remove the dough put a little bit of oil if you want, and then we're gonna cover it to double. That can take like an hour to an hour and a half, but depending on where you are, it's gonna take a little bit less or a little more time. All right, so now we're gonna make the topping, which is what gives it its name. Conchas means shells. So it's a sugary topping. It's similar to like, kind of like a crumbly sugary cookie. And it's very simple to make. You don't need a mixer or anything. So we're going to make two different kinds. So you're going to put your butter, you're going to put flour, sugar together, and your vanilla. Now the two most common uh, flavors of conchas in Mexico are chocolate and vanilla. And that's what I'm going to show you how to make here. And you can 
do this straight in a counter or in a bowl and you're just mixing until everything comes together. It takes a couple of minutes. You can make this ahead of time and keep it refrigerated and it's just going to clean the sides of the bowl and that's when you know when you know it's ready it's you see it fully incorporated it doesn't stick to your hand you don't see any bits whatsoever and and that's it so that's the vanilla one so for the chocolate one it's the same recipe but you substitute half of the amount of flour with cocoa powder it doesn't matter whether it's uh, Dutch processed or not. It's whatever you have in hand. And you can add a little vanilla extract if you want, but you don't have to. So this dough has doubled in volume. It's been about 90 minutes or so. So I like to put a little bit of flour in your table or work area. And we're going to empty the dough into it. It's going to be smooth. We're going to put it here and then we're just going to knead it lightly, not too much. And that's it. Just going to, it's really nice and smooth. You can feel it's a little bit elastic and you can always weigh it to see how much it weighs and divide it by 10 so you can be exact. It gives you a rough amount of how much it should be. Okay, so when you cut it, this I always prefer to use a bench scraper or a knife rather than pulling it. You don't really want to pull the dough like that. And I want to cut them all out first and then shape them. So then you're going to take your dough and you can kind of tuck to help you a little bit. You're going to put it on your surface and you're going to put it kind of shape it, use this part of your palm, right? So that you want to make kind of like a tight round. And that's beautiful. And then you can do, as you practice, you can do both of them two at the same time. And then once you have them like this, you want to flatten them a little bit. This is a really nice, you know, you can feel like it's smooth, it's elastic. These are going to make beautiful conchas. And now we're going to do the topping. So we, I'm going to show you a, a few little tools that are handy, but you don't need to have them. I'm going to show you how to make them with and without. Okay, so first we're going to, uh, we have uh, egg white and a little brush. If you don't have a brush, you can use your hands, right? That's just going to help it stick. Then we have a little tortilla press that's going to help make them even, but again, I'm going to show you how to do them by hand in case you don't have one. And then this is a concha cutter. This is my concha cutter. I have many of those <laughs> uh, that I bring back from Mexico. And you see it has two shapes. So this shape is, gives it the nice shell shape, right? And then this shape is straight lines. If you do like a crisscross shape, it reminds me of a turtle. Uh, you know, kind of like a turtle shell. If you don't have a tortilla press, one way that I like to do it is to make a little kind of just roll it out and then you can kind of just see, oh, I have 10 and you can just kind of cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? And you can start with one and see also how if that if that's big enough. So if you don't have a tortilla press, you can just kind of press it with your hands and it should be, and it's not sticking, you see, because like we checked before. And it should be a little bit bigger than, than your concha so that it can go all the way to the sides, all right? So before putting that, that on, we want to take a little brush. You don't need a lot of egg white. This is just so it sticks to it better. You can, if you don't have a brush, you can use your hands. If you don't have any extra eggs, you can put a little bit of water instead. Okay, this is like just a little insurance. All right, so you wanna make sure that 
when you brush it, you brush not just the top but the side because you want to put the sugary concha topping all over. Okay, so once you have that, I'm going to see if this one is big enough. And don't worry about it if as you're putting it on, if it cracks a little, that's okay. That's going to happen as you bake them. Okay, so if you're going to use the tortilla press, you're going to put your paper or your plastic. You're going to make a little ball. I'm going to flatten it a little bit. Put the other piece. And then you don't want to press too hard because you want to see how, how it is. And usually with tortilla presses, one thing that happens, one side ends up being a little bit thinner than, than the other. You could just turn it around. Again, this is if you want to be really exact and nitpicky. So you peel the first one out. So what's nice about doing the tortilla press is, is that you can get it really thin. So to make the shapes, you dip the concha cutter in a little bit of flour, but you kind of want to shake off the excess. This is just so it doesn't stick. You can use your hand, right? And then you're gonna press pretty quickly, and then you're gonna go down like, like that, okay? I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> if you don't have a concha cutter, you can use a little paring knife. So again, you want to dip it a little bit and you can mimic that shape. If you want to use the other side of the cutter, you use it the same way. You know, dip it a little bit, and then you go one, and then you cross it, two. And then that's another finish that you can have. So you go one, two. So sometimes you don't have to dip it in between. You have to see if it sticks too much, then you can add a little bit more flour and then you can dust off like this. And we're gonna set this to proof, but the best way to tell it's ready is because the top is going to expand. It's going to kind of pull apart as the dough underneath expands. So once you start to be able to see the dough underneath peak, it's gonna be ready. All right, so our conchas have been proofing for about 30, 40 minutes and they are ready. All right, the conchas are ready. Woohoo! Look how beautiful. This one's pretty, pretty perfect. <laughs> Aren't these so beautiful? I mean, look at them. These are my absolute favorite pan dulce from Mexico. Every time I go, we go on a hunt. Oh my God, this is so delicious. It is so good. So if you see like inside, it's like nice and spongy. <laughs> and this sugary topping, like my mom, she does this thing that is really annoying. She will we'll get a whole bunch of conchas and she will eat literally the shell, you know, and she will leave the conchas like this. <laughs> like put them back like this. <laughs> She'll be like, oh, we have conchas and we'll open it and we'll find them like this. Like, <laughs> who does that? My mom. Just the top first and then the rest. I like to kind of do a little bit of both, but the flavor, mmm, it's so good. So the inside, it's sort of, it's very soft, but chewy at the same time, like it has a bite. And the outside is just, like a very crispy, sugary, and it's just so good. And because the bread itself is not too sweet, it sort of complements. And for the most part, Mexican breads the, it, are not too sweet, like the bread itself. And so they get most of the sweetness from the fillings and the toppings, like in this case. And it's just, it's just delicious. I hope that you make these at home, that you love them as much as I do. 
It, they're really fun, they're really delicious. Just like this, they're wonderful.